baby, you know. That's it, right? Yeah, I knew it. Yes. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. Kind of love. Steven Universe, the movie. September 2nd. I don't want to say too much. There's so much in this. This movie's so just jam packed with everything everything we love to do as a as a team so i feel like it's such a celebration of everything we've loved about making the show together within the team and i just i cannot wait for it to be out um but i i'm trying not to say too much <laughs> trying yeah. not to say too much it's a really fun film it's gonna be lit <laughs> I feel like every every happy ending is also the start of something new, just in general. And I think as an artist, um, this was such a thrilling project to work on, and we all got to see each other, and um, it's a musical. So I don't know. I, that's all, I guess. I should just stop talking. <laughs> yeah. I think Rebecca's mm -hmm. the key and the team are the key. Um, they, they do such a great job of just simplifying and writing really great songs. Um, I've learned so much and they're, they're good to sing, which is just amazing. Um, when you know you're an artist and everyone's like, well, what are you gonna do on the show? And you're like, sing too? Because <laughs> um, that's, you know. And then the songs come out and they're brilliant songs and I'm not surprised by it, but I'm more so just excited by the songs. Like the words are simple and they're beautiful and everyone, and the melodies are great and it fits and it's not dumbed down and it's not patronizing and it's not, even though it's in, you know, all the connotations that come along with an animated show. This show is not patronizing. The songs are not patronizing. The songs are beautiful, well-written, amazing records. Um, and yeah, this she's the key. So um, all her, all them. Thank you. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm a really uh, big fan of the. There's this Bob Fosse philosophy where, in a musical, a character has to be feeling something so strongly that speaking isn't enough, so they have to sing, and if that's not enough, then they have to dance. So I believe that, especially with a full musical, it just has to be so emotionally palpable that it's just not enough to speak these lines. It's not enough to just stand and deliver them, that, that the characters are compelled to join in, yeah, to break into song, yeah. <laughs> And when we sing in the booth, I mean, I, I kind of like, I try not to snap because that'll mess with the sound, but I kind of boogie a little, you know? Yeah. Especially, especially when Rebecca gives us direction like, oh, maybe make it a little more jazzy or bring it down a bit. But you, you know, you really feel it in your body. Jazz hands. Yeah. <laughs> Jazz hands. Every song. Yeah. The movie's actually special because it's the, we worked with the voice director. I would always be there, but through the entire show, the movie, uh, I did all the voice direction personally, because mm. um, it's so. And I would always direct songs, but this is so. There's so much singing mm. that I just went ahead and did all of them. <laughs> this is such a happy. Sorry. Oh, okay. This is such a happy um, a combination of all of the things that I personally love about a show, let alone. A, I mean. A, a cartoon, let alone a show. Um, I love singing and then also acting and then this beautiful story comes together with all of us um, uh, contributing in our own way and uh, you know Rebecca at the heart of it and her team. It's this project has been such a dream come true for me so I'm so grateful. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's such an honor. It's always so exciting to work with this cast because like Michaela knows comedy and Dee Dee knows musical theater and Estelle knows great songwriting so I know that if they like it that I'm doing something right I always <laughs> <laughs> I always get to uh, sort of feel out you know if it's up to the standards of my team I always w it pushes me to do my best work really there was so much we worked so hard just on on every stage of this movie and the way that people pitched certain lines in the room, the way that dialogue would flow into songs. We had this very, very, very specific vision. So I would really go in representing sort of my team upstairs. I say up upstairs, because our, our crew would work <laughs> on the third floor and the recording studio's on the first floor. Uh, you know, I would come down and just try and preserve the, that intonation and that, that, you know, delivery that my team would have when, when they were pitching their own drawings or uh, just, 
conversations we would have about how the characters were feeling, things that they weren't saying with words but were saying with their body language, you know, that has to be behind all of these lines. I would always try and explain like, well, they're saying this, but they're really feeling this, or they're, you know, they're so oblivious to this in this moment that, that that's not even what, they don't even realize what they're talking about. You know, the, the intent is so important, and I was trying to carry that through. What we've always hoped to do with the show was to really reflect our personal childhoods on the team. Uh, and so the show is a reflection of us, and many of us are members of, of that community. So one thing that we've always really tried to do is be as specific as possible to our own experiences. Uh, there really is no one way to be non-binary. Every, everybody's experience is different. There, there are so many, you know, beautiful, magical, incredible shades of, of queerness that we're, we're all different on staff. We've had different experiences and being able to talk to each other about them and get to make art about that is so important to us. And so it's really such an honor to feel that reception from members of the community so far outside of, of just my small community, just to know that we're reaching other people. And I've felt so much less alone to be, to, to feel heard in a way I really never, never did, especially not as a kid, especially not as a teen, not in, not even in my 20s. It's just, you know, it's been really amazing and it's just such an honor. You know, it, no, it, and I get it because people, people walk up to us at cons and whatnot and they're like, you know, I wish we had this when we were kids. And my response is always like, you have it now. And I always tell her, like, you don't understand what you're doing for people. People are up here walking up to the booth and, and crying at us and, you know, telling us how happy and how emotional they are about having feeling seen you know so as much as you're doing it and you're doing it for you and you're giving us your up you're doing it for so many people and it's beautiful that you don't even look at it like a responsibility it's just being you know and, and there's a space to be and I, and I think people are grateful for that and you know as an ally I'm, I'm grateful for you, you know? <laughs> thank you for sure it's, it's been a wonderful tool I think for people like you say outside of the community to really empower allies um, you know like this character Stevani I think there are so many people who didn't understand um, be what being non-binary meant and this is a really easy way to show people like yeah they're they're exactly like us and um, but it's a it's a great example to point to I think and entertaining and moving yeah so my tiger beat ultimate teen crush was Jordan Knight from New Kids on the Block <laughs> baby you know <laughs> 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 That's it, right? Yeah, I knew it. Yes. <laughs> yes. The best VHS slumber party movie was Breaking. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, good one. Turbo and Ozone. And then I remember that my mom told me that like Turbo had died because he was breakdancing because she wanted to stop us from breakdancing when we were kids because we started spinning our heads. And then I found out he hadn't died. So also. Oh my god. He he broke. He didn't. He was Breaking he's, so he's hard. I think he's still alive. I don't know. Um, she lied to us. The best nineties trend yeah. that's back in style now. This is sort of early nineties, but the fanny pack. Actually, I would like to argue that it's a timeless piece. It's both both fashionable and functional, and they're way back. I can way back. I concur. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of childhood photos of me sporting fanny packs of different colors. Really? Did you have a shell suit one? Oh, no, I wasn't that what? cool, but I wish. Yo, that's the other thing I wanted when I was a child. What? A shell suit. And my mom waited to the end of the trend to get us one because it was cheaper, I guess. Yes. <laughs> she like, right smart the, lady. Right, right at the end of the trend, she was like, you can have all the shell suits you want. Yeah. And like two ninety nine. Like, uh, lady, I wanted even when they were fifteen ninety nine. Like, <laughs> when everyone had them, when they were like 500 pounds, hey, <laughs> give me it then.